So a great big welcome to you on this the fourth Sunday of Advent. It's a uh, Christmas Eve morning, and we're glad that you can join us. Uh, hope that uh, many of you can come for the Christmas Eve service, uh, which will be tonight at uh, five o'clock. We'd love to have you join us, and uh, it's a wonderful time to celebrate uh, the birth of our Lord as we gather, as we sing uh, those beautiful uh, Christmas hymns, and uh, reminded of that beautiful baby born long ago. And not only be born into this world, but we continue to pray that he be born anew in our hearts and our lives. And so the uh, the message today, uh, the, the, lesson, the gospel lesson today is about that uh, awesome woman, really a young girl named Mary, about her life and how she was approached by an angel. I don't know about you, but if an angel uh, suddenly appeared to me, <laughs> I'd, I'd probably have a heart attack and fall flat on my face. But Mary, she's amazing. Uh, they think she's probably maybe 13 or 14 years old. Um, back then, that's about when they would get married. And uh, she uh, um, she was a little nervous, but the uh, first thing the angel said is, do not be afraid, as angels seem to always say when they appear to people. And just said that uh, she's blessed because she has been chosen to be uh, the mother of our Lord. And uh, and the, the beauty of it is that she believed. Uh, she's an inspiration for us. And we're grateful for Mary uh, as she continues to inspire uh, millions down through the centuries of her faithfulness and of her ability to believe and trust in such a marvelous way. So anyways, I hope that the service uh, this day is uh, helpful for you. I hope it helps uh, prepare your hearts and minds as it does for me uh, as we get ready for that birth of the Christ child. And again, as I mentioned, if you get a chance to come for Christmas Eve service tonight, 5 o'clock, I'd love to have you. And uh, with that said, let me begin the service now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let me continue with the prayer of the day. And so stir up your power, O Lord, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us. Free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. The angel tells Mary that God will give David's throne to her son Jesus. We, who know that Jesus is called King only as he is executed, still find it a mystery. But with Mary today, we bow our heads in thanks and awe. Let us pray. Praise to you, O God, who lives with us, sharing our flesh and bones. As Mary waited and Joseph dreamed, so we dream and wait for you. Bless us and let your face shine upon us, more radiant than these candles and more dear than all else we seek. Restore us when we fail to refuse the evil and choose the good and banish all our fears. We pray in the name of Emmanuel, your promised child and our Savior. Amen. The Gospel lesson for this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, is from the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning with verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You'll name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And even now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month of her for who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
And so grace and peace to you from God our Father and from Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. And so let us pray. Lord, we thank you again as we gather as your people on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, as we continue to prepare our hearts and our lives for your coming. O Lord, come. Come and fill our lives till they truly overflow. I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleased in your sight. Most I pray. Amen. So let me ask you, have you all finished your Christmas shopping? <laughs> if not, and it's Sunday morning, you still got a few hours left. I suspect if we take a peek at our local malls and nearby stores, we'll see some frenzied shoppers trying to do the last minute bidding. I can't fault them because I, I is one. <laughs> I have been often one of them. I found that I could get so wrapped up in the frenzy of the season that I too would easily miss the importance of the season altogether. I think that's why on this Sunday before Christmas, we need to go right to the heart of the Christmas story. And when we do, I believe we are struck by the utter simplicity of the beautiful Christmas message. And so we begin by saying an angel spoke. You see, long ago in a remote, remote corner of this earth, God broke into our world, and he did that through the voice of an angel. Our story begins today with a young woman named Mary. As was the custom of the day, her parents made all their arrangements for her marriage. At the proper age, she would marry Joseph, the local carpenter. Negotiations, negotiations were made between Mary's parents and Joseph's parents, with the couple having no say in the matter. Since Nazareth was a small village, Mary probably knew Joseph. Certainly, I'm sure she had seen him working in his carpenter shop. Well, Mary and Joseph were betrothed to each other. You see, betrothal was for a period of one year and was as binding as a marriage. It was so official that during this year, if the groom died, the woman would be considered a widow. Well, one day as Mary was daydreaming about her upcoming marriage, she looked up and saw an angel. An angel, mind you, standing right before her. And she was startled and she was frightened. Because never in a million years did Mary dream of being visited by an angel. Greetings, favored one, the angel said to a frightened Mary. What an unusual way to begin. Favored one? Why? Mary was just an ordinary girl. There was nothing special about Mary. She hadn't come from a wealthy family. She wasn't listed in the society pages of the Nazareth Times. We don't even know her parents' names. No one outside of Nazareth had even heard of her. She was just your average young woman. Well, Mary was perplexed and confused. And I think Gabriel sensed Mary's fear, and he tried to comfort her. He said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Mary didn't realize it at the time, but God had chosen her for a very special purpose. The angel went on to say, Now you'll conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you'll name him Jesus. I can only imagine what was going through Mary's mind. This plain, plain, ordinary, simple young girl, wondering, what could all this mean? As she took in the words of the angel in that first Christmas drama. And so we know that an angel spoke. But not only that, a young woman also believed. I think that's the next thing we want to focus on. Mary believed. Mary listened to the angel's words. He will be great, Gabriel told her, and will be called the Son of the Most High. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Although we know very little about Mary and her family, we can assume that she was a devout Jew who had listened and believed the scripture lessons that were read at the local synagogue. But although she was certainly startled by the appearance of an angel, as any of us would have been, his words didn't seem foreign to her. Deep in her heart, she believed that one day the Messiah would come. She has never realized that she would be the chosen one to be the Messiah's mother. A woman by the name of Wendy Wright tells of attending a retreat at a Benedictine mon monastery on the coast of rural Massachusetts. It had been a brisk New England winter with plenty of cold weather and lots of snow. One night as she was leaving the warm retreat house, an old monk burst in. Does anyone, anyone want to see a newborn lamb down at the barn? He asked excitedly. Well, some begged off, saying they had a long drive to make, but only Wendy. Wendy and two others accepted his invitation. So he led them out through the snowy woods to a low wooden lean-to that served as a barn for the community's livestock. 
When he noticed how dark it was, far from the nighttime glow of the city. And once inside, it was as if they were in a whole another world. There was one bare light bulb hanging from the rafters, sending on even rays of illumination over a variety of small farm animals. The warmth of the makeshift barn came from the bodies and breaths of the animal themselves. A strange feeling came over Wendy. Over in the corner was this newborn lamb and its mother. As she stood there, she imagined what it must have been like for Mary when Jesus was born. Mothers today have access to the privacy and hygienic conditions of a birthing room in a modern hospital, along with a staff of trained personnel. Mary, on the other hand, was a young woman far from home and from family. Her birthing room hung heavy with a strong stench of animal debris. Mary would have no health professional to assist her through her labor. And in that setting on a cold New England night, Wendy thought about Jesus' birth many years before. It was a vision that took my breath away, she said. Well, I think the angel's words probably took Mary's breath away as well. She, mind you, she would bear a son. He would rule over the house of Israel. But Mary's response was one of bewilderment. How can this be? she asked the divine messenger. Gabriel reminded her that her cousin Elizabeth was far from past the childbearing age, but she was six months pregnant. And this was God's doing, the angel told her, for nothing, nothing is impossible with God. And that's all it took for Mary to be convinced. She believed the angel's message, and the rest, as they say, is history. Well, we have an angel that spoke, young woman believed, and then the world was changed forever. If you and I had been giving God advice from 2,000 years ago, we would surely have said that the last thing the world needs is another baby. Give us a spectacular display in the heavens. Give us satellite television. Then we could communicate God's love to the whole world. Give us a few billion dollars. And then we could feed the hungry. But another baby? Really? Give us a break, God. It reminds me of a story of an old absent-minded woman who realizes with horror that she has switched two Christmas gifts and sent them to the wrong people. The thick woolen song socks that she had made for her poor friend, Hilda, had been sent to her gra great-granddaughter instead. And the lovely lace and satin nightgown that she had bought for her granddaughter had been sent to Hilda. The old woman was mortified because her friend Hilda was plain, poor, simple, and unadorned. Such a lovely nightgown would almost seem a mockery to Hilda's plainness. But a few days later, after Christmas, the old woman receives two letters. First is from her granddaughter, thanking her for the fashionable ski socks. The second is from an ecstatically grateful Hilda. You see, no one had ever thought to give her something so beautiful. Hilda writes that she puts on the nightgown and she dances across her rough wooden floor for the first time in her life. She feels pretty. She said it was the perfect gift. Well, you see, God knew the perfect gift for humanity. He knew if you feed the hungry, that solves a problem for only a generation. He knew that satellite television would only bring out the worst in human character. And a spectacular display in the heavens would have to be repeated until it lost its appeal. Only, mind you, only the Word made flesh could really point the way to God. Only one who has walked where we walked could claim our loyalty. God broke into human history and gave us what the world needed most. God gave us love incarnate. God give us God, Emmanuel. And Mary's response to the angel echoes through the centuries. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word, she says. There was no long debate. There was no trying to see what she could personally get out of it. Mary didn't ask Gabriel to come back in 30 days after she had time to think about it. There was no half-hearted response. Instead, Mary believed everything that the angel had told her. And because Mary believed, you and I, we have that gift, that awesome gift of God's salvation. In an obscure stable in Bethlehem some 2,000 years ago, an angel spoke. A young woman believed. And the world, well, let's just say the world was changed forever. May the birth of the Christ child not only continue to change this world, but continue to change our hearts and our lives this holy season. I pray it be so. All God's people said, Amen. What child is this who lay to rest? A
on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthems sweet, while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him loud, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lie he in such mean estate, where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian fee for sinners here, the silent word is pleading. This fear shall pierce him through, the cross be born for me and you. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you.